hospitalized straight away and they're like, you are not allowed to be sick. It is your fault. That was probably the lowest point in my entire life. <laughs> kind of having to go back to zero and figure out exactly what you want in life. I'm just like taking it one day at a time. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Cat. And Lady Bear coming at you <laughs> with another home and contents insuring and storm it off. Cat back with Beard. Back again with rin, the, the greatest teacher at a country school who was treated <laughs> horribly by her colleagues, Rin Rin. Yeah, we were uh, just off camera talking about how yeah. that was a massive loss for that school. Yeah. You went above and beyond with that little post box. Yeah. So and now, then they bully you out of the school. That yeah. Their school loss. We're proposing now that I go get a job in this school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Specifically so I can stick these douchebags in their place. their loss because... Every school I go to, I revamp their cards too. Oh. I use my budget to redo all of their cards because a lot of them are just like really run down. Mm, so I yeah. would take my time to remake them and re-laminate all of them so that the next teachers would have a good time and relabel oh. everything. Mm-hmm. I, what a sweetheart. And would they destroy that too or would those actually stay? I don't know. Oh, okay. Because um, that's beyond her time. Yeah. That's yes, beyond then. Time. Okay. What a, wow. You're above a superstar, and beyond. Right? You went above and beyond. And then you had a big crash on the meltdown because yeah, of so bullying you, you and overworking. Yeah. Yeah. My, my body shut down, I think, mm. before my mind decided to give up on it. Mm. I think my my body was just like, mm, maybe not, not the time anymore. So I stayed in the U.S., for about six months after that, for about half a year. So you you pretty much handed in your visa in Japan and were like, bye? I was recovering mm-hmm. because it was just a really tough time. And then I ended up quitting over the phone. My, I remember I was in the hospital and actually I was actually scheduled to do like a like a um, fashion show oh. uh, the month l- later. And then at that time I was in an agency that was kind of harsh as well Mm. and they were calling me like over and over again while I was in the hospital and they were like when are you going to come back like you know you can't be sick you know kind of thing that's a Japanese attitude everyone watching you're not allowed to be sick and if you get sick it is your fault yeah exactly it's your responsibility I'm sorry but let's be honest we all came in (laughs) even though we're sick well I did all come in today no one wanted to be the one that cancels because you're sick because that is the working culture but we all came in in never mind gone like good good spirits and you're wearing your mask and we're being careful but still it's the working ethics in Japan. Right. So. It is pretty instilled in, I believe, all of us because my working experience did start in Japan. So this is all I know. Oh, you never had a job in America beyond that I one mean, commercial. I worked side jobs. <laughs> like I worked at the omissions office. The what? Omissions office? Yeah. What? I saw everyone applying for what's, school. What's the omissions office? Where you receive everyone's applications for college. Oh, it sounds to me like a place where you go to make sure your car doesn't pollute the ozone layer too much. No, admission. Oh, like, admission? Yeah. I thought you said omissions. I'm no, so no, sorry. No, no. So sorry. Admissions office. I'm so yeah. sorry. I thought you said omissions. I'm yeah. so sorry. No. So you, we have that big break. How did you recover? Where is the Phoenix story that we want? Give yeah. us the Phoenix. Give so us the Rin Rin Phoenix. I quit, quit during that mm-hmm. time when I was sick. That was probably the lowest point in my entire life really? like I was just like didn't know what was happening like I, I didn't know how when my body was going to recover mm. and it was just like a really really tough time and like didn't know what to do at all like absolutely not and you know I quit the English teaching job too you know, so you quit the agency and your English teaching. Yeah, I wow. I quit everything because um, I I didn't know when I was well enough to go back. I was hospitalized for a couple of days, and then after that, I was recovered. Like I could not move for a long time. Oh, so man. like kind of having to go back to zero and figure out exactly what you want in life. Mm. And um, you know, at that time, I just like went back and saw my friends. You know. St- you know, was staying at home with family and all that stuff. So, I mean, I knew I had to go back to Japan because I was still paying rent on my apartment Mm -hmm. and stuff. So I had to come back. So when I came back to kind of figure out everything, that's when I got, I was, I was still doing some modeling 
because I was I didn't fully quit the agency at that time. Like I I said no to like a couple those jobs, but you know I was still able to work as a model. Uh, if you guys don't know, if you have a working visa, you need to have a sub visa for work modeling and entertainment yeah. business. So I had that. So um, I was doing that kind of work um, on the side, like one off while figuring out what to do. And then that's when, after doing a couple jobs, uh, I was led to uh, be invited to be part of the YouTuber um, boot camp. Oh, because hey. they finished building the YouTube Space Tokyo. Oh, at yes. Time. Mm-hmm. YouTube In Space Rapunzi Tokyo at the time. was this uh, YouTube had uh, a venue. Specifically right. for YouTubers to go there, had editing suites. Oh, sound let me say YouTube. that YouTube, YouTube. What? Yeah. I what? went to that what? studio when it was all yeah. new as well. It was yeah. like the whole start of it in Roppongi. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was, it was like yeah. a whole new shining thing, and it was it brought like the whole community finally together. Oh. You could sign up to get your own studios in mm. there. It was exciting, and yeah. they were like special. The special people got invited yeah. to special like just. To not just workshops, but the boot camp. Yeah. She made it in. Sorry. Yeah. I, had to, I had to YouTuber this. Yeah. Dear so me. Please continue. I was part of the YouTube beauty guru. Oh. So it was pretty cool. Like uh, they offered, it was like a month, a month and a half course where it was almost like school. We came in and we learned all day. Like one day would be dedicated to how to light yourself and another day would be how to set up your camera to shoot yourself and another day would be editing all about editing and another one would be like for us it was beauty so we had a stylist come in and teach us how to style and also a makeup artist come in and teach us how to do makeup and you know our homework basically what we have to give in uh, back was a collaboration video among all of the the beauty guru people that was it, as students and we got a stipend to start our first like setup mm. so all of my camera and lighting my first ones were all thanks to youtube very grateful <laughs> for that i think yeah. in those times especially the youtube studio was very active there were loads of cool things happening lots yeah. of like monthly events all of yes, yes. bringing everyone together so it was like a very yeah. communal thing but then special selected programs if you made it into yeah. the boot camps it's like oh they made it into the boot camp it yeah. was like a big deal as well it was very fun um it was almost like school and i feel like we were treated like students at the same time because like they would, like you said, there were special tie-ups too. Like there was one specific tie-up with Toei Animation oh, Studios. Mm-hmm. Or is it just studios? And they made like this like Edo Jidai like period area. Set, yeah. yeah. In the space. And then as like you literally you apply with your ideas to make a video. And then if you get selected and part of the program, then we actually took a trip down to the actual studios wow. and it was like an overnight trip. And I just remember this always because it just felt like we were a student. We would have a sleepover mm. and we were playing like Jinro game like throughout the night oh. and stuff. And it was just like so cute, mm-hmm. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> so yeah, like they, they were really great memories. Sounds yeah. wonderful. I'm, you seem to have like really lucky moments in your life, which is like yeah. that, like that getting casted for that commercial. And then very unlucky times when you're like, you're being a good teacher, but you're getting bullied by someone you never found out who that was. And then again, you get selected for the YouTube beauty guru camp. Yeah. And things seem to be going really well for I you. I never made that connection. I just think everybody has highs and lows <laughs> in yeah. their life. No, that, yeah. but it's wonderful to see that you came out of the darkness, right? Because I assume that like, after what happened, your family, did they not tell you to stay or your friends saying, hey, stay? Oh, yeah, stay. they wanted me to stay. Yeah. Stay in LA. Yeah. So you still decided to go back and then good things started. Yeah, I, about I went time? back. Um, I mean, one, it was kind of to either see if there was a future here anymore or to pack up and go. Ooh. Like either one, I had to come back because mm. I had my stuff, all of my stuff mm. here. Mm. Like. Either way, I can't just leave it to my roommate to be like, hey, can you clear out my whole place? I'm leaving. (laughs) Like, I can't just do that. So it was at that changing time that I, you know, got accepted to do the YouTube stuff. And then after that, immediately went into a YouTuber agency and 
I guess now we're here. <laughs> we yeah, This is excellent, Rin Rin. I'm very happy that that story had a happy ending. Yeah. yeah but it's a good story because it had such a horrendous, you know, second act. Yeah. Come out of that. With the mm. sickness and like, because I understand that your family and your friends were like, stay here. It's your country. It's nice. But you're like, okay, sunshine, I give Japan yeah. one more chance yeah exactly instead of swimming in the sea mm -hmm. and you know having fun with your friends you, you gave japan one more chance and it worked out for you now as a successful mm -hmm. youtuber did you ever uh, go back to that school in the countryside to reap revenge upon the horrendous no, no. That <laughs> does she look no. like the person who would do that now? however wow. however i was very thankful that i actually taught during that time because um Actually, at that time, too, because I was doing the Doksha model for Kera and Gothic Lolita Bible, the kids would actually bring the magazines to school. Oh. They would hide it and they're like, Sensei, somebody looks like you. Oh. I'm like, wow, she looks very cute, but <laughs> not me. Like, so I'm like, wow. Oh. I was like, yeah, she looks great. <laughs> but like, you know, they were the demographic that became YouTube watchers. <gasps> so afterwards, when I started YouTube, I would get comments from these kids. They're like, uh, they will be like in high school by that time. And then they were like, Sensei, I remember you. Oh, that's oh, lovely. Sensei. <laughs> like, nice. It was so cute. That is yeah. lovely, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I still get some of them come up to me sometimes. Uh, if I'm like walking around Harajuku, they'll be like, and they're like, I'm now graduated from college. And I'm like, oh my God, you're yeah. so big. That's the strange thing is now they're a fully functioning human. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So, right. So you got hooked up with the YouTuber agency and since then it's just been clear sailing Rin Rin, the fashion influencer? Yeah, I mean, I don't, oh, nice. I don't know what like brings, what's the next thing. I mean, we we all went through a pandemic together, mm -hmm. you know, like, Didn't uh, we? yeah. So like things definitely changed. Like I definitely had to pivot a little bit. So doing um, like not only just doing like in front of the camera stuff, but I'm also doing consulting now and oh, things like that. Consulting? Yeah, I started doing that. I started like a, I also started doing like a pop-up shop overseas oh. and stuff, you know, bringing brands that I like overseas. Sorry, is it okay to ask what sort of consulting? Yeah. Uh, social media. So oh, okay. um, especially like for companies that want to go abroad and didn't, doesn't know how to, you know, gear their social media towards overseas audiences. Mm. Uh, that's where I come in and kind of be like, hey, you know, kind of fix this. I'm mm -hmm. not a pro, but like, you know, I, at least I know like what are the basics that would help get them started if you can you know? write consultant on your profile that makes you an official smart person as far I as i'm know. concerned <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's like way way better people but i would just do what they needed and so and so now so you're doing all your social media and whatnot you're consulting and so forth yeah but you also you go you go to conventions and whatnot and do tea parties and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, that has always been uh, going. Can on you too. explain what a tea party is to the uninitiated? <sighs> go go so, go, girl! A tea party. Hmm, that's a good question. I mean, generally, a tea party would be a place where everyone gathers, have tea, and just like. Be among community and friends. Oh, okay. Um, so you just hang out, basically, yes, with the community. You hang out. Okay, well, that sounds um, lovely. But there are different types of tea parties. So in my mind, what I see them as are like, there are brand-hosted tea parties, which is basically what um, like Lolita brands or any other brand can do it, actually. It doesn't matter if you're a Lolita brand or not, but like you would host it, you know, show the upcoming season of clothing. So you have fashion shows and it's kind of like a way for the brand to show appreciation to their customers and be like, hey, there's a hangout time with us and, you know, come and have fun with us. And then there are community led tea parties, which is like everyone who just like wants to hang out every now and then just wants to have a tea party. And then there's like other like uh, hosted tea parties, like for example, like a magazine hosted, mm. or for example, sometimes I even host a tea party and stuff. And it was, those would be more kind of like uh, having a schedule like of events and mm, stuff. I so uh, 
for my birthday tea party last year. That was the first tea party I ever like fully hosted mm. by myself. Um, and I would start it with like inviting all of my creative friends and we would have talk shows and uh. my hair makeup friends would do a hair makeup show uh. or an brand like if it's other brands then they can like showcase their new items you know or do a hair set you know we try to kind of um uh, kind of bridge that gap between um the the people who are like industry based with the people who love looking at the lolita fashion and enjoying lolita fashion and can have a direct contact and ask their questions and stuff so and that sounds like a wonderful plan can yeah you, can you tell us about your brand yeah since oh. we're here you, you have a brand yeah. yourself now uh i started this like we're all holding of, up our rings by the yeah. way for those who are listening right now we have <laughs> wonderfully sparkly rings yeah. Lumiere by Rin Rin? yes lumi rev <laughs> it's it's a word be, it's um luminous reverie <laughs> ah, lumi rev and, yeah so lumi rev <laughs> yeah um, it was basically, uh, just like a fun brand I started during, uh, the pandemic, you know, I have so much time. Mm. <laughs> so I was just like making the stuff and then it kind of just kind of took off from there too. Like I got opportunity to kind of showcase it in different places. And I, I realized it can't just be a DIY brand anymore. It has to actually have branding and packaging and everything. <laughs> so, barcode. It's got a barcode. Yeah, it has impressed. a barcode. Very uh, impressed. Yeah. Um, very thankful that I was able to sell it at Isetan as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's so, a huge That's why it's barcoded now. <laughs> so I'm just that's like, a big deal, my friends. Yeah, wow. it was... Is yeah. it in what what is kind of part of the brand? Like what kind of stuff do you sell apart um, from the rings? Rings. Um, I started off with earrings. So I was only I was making these like this is glass, uh, glass beads, and I made these like cross earrings. And um, I don't know. I just really liked. I really love earrings. So I like made a ton of earrings. I started making hairpins, and then I was I, these are like little parts of the cross actually. And I just like held it against my finger. I was like, I really want this on my fingers. And so I figured out a way to like put it on my finger. Like Pops lots of little of um, like sparkly glass, pieces of glass in mm -hmm. a way. Okay. Is that glass. Part of, the, part of the cross? Yeah. This, this is like, it would be one, two, three, four, and then one, one. So, so make let, a cross. Let's do, let's do that for the camera one more time, please. So, it, show it this uh, so way the, the beads camera. are making the shape of a cross? Yeah. So there will be one one set here and then another set, another set, another set, and then here and then here. So earrings. Yeah. Uh, and we have rings. rings. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that the English just didn't uh, come from them. And the hair, earrings, rings. Hair pins. Yeah. Hair pins. Yeah. That's about it. Not, not a lot. Necklaces. I started like making a couple necklaces. Mm -hmm. But they're really whatever I feel like making and then that's what it's selling. So I don't have like a set list of this color way and this thing. It's like I'll make some and then I'll sell it at the next time I have a chance <laughs> but, to. But if we buy something from you, we know you made it yourself. Uh, yes. It's amazing. These, these are all like took time to make. <laughs> wow. Do have, thank yes. you. Do you have an online store? Can people overseas buy no. your stuff? No. 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 I mean, I have a merch store through Aitai Kuji, okay. but uh, this ring, I haven't figured out how to sell these things. Because again, like I said, I don't have a set like colorway oh, that I, I make see. things. They're all uh, like... Uh, everything's an I individualized like piece. Yeah. Oh, I see. Wow. That's amazing, Rin, Rin. They're all wow. random. <laughs> so, hey. Wow. One next of a time, kind. I like mine. Next time Rin, Rin tea parties in a town near you, go pick up some amazing <laughs> Rin, Rin stuff. Um, yeah. And so what does the future hold for Rin, Rin that question? Yeah. Um, I don't know, okay. but... I do want to start my own brand Yay. one day. Well, you so, already started it. I was going to say, don't you have one of those already? This is my accessories brand that I like make when I feel like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like I do want to design stuff. I love, you know, styling and stuff like that. So I kind of want to make my own pieces someday. Um, yeah. And um, I started live streaming recently. So oh. I'm just having fun with that. Any advice mm. for, for your fans or people who like watching you like, I want to be like Rin Rin. I want to like model and wear kawaii fashion and do also content creation. Any advice for someone maybe watching right now mm. to 
to start on that path? Wearing like kawaii fashion, there are challenges, of course, if you're like living away from Japan. Um, but you can always style your clothes where, like, however you want. So, going to、um, a flea market or going to a used clothes store, you know, like you could always start. When, like today, right now.、Mm. What are the challenges、um, of, of wearing kawaii fashion if you don't live in Japan? Just sourcing the clothes. Finding the outfits, I、yeah. think, is quite tough abroad because、oh, all the frilly stuff that、yeah. we see in stores normally doesn't exist the same way abroad.、Oh, I see, I see, right. I see. One, number two, safety.、Mm-hmm. Safety?、Um, well, if you dress up in full, like the, the kind、mm-hmm. of fashion that we wear, you probably in different countries get stares, get like cat calls, get、mm-hmm. like, you know. All、Another、right. thing is safety. That's why a lot of communities also you go out in groups if you wear this kind、mm-hmm. of fashion, so you don't get like some sort of harassment while you're in the streets. Oh,、mm-hmm. I see. That's true. Yeah, I'm sure everyone faces different、um, challenges when wearing Lolita fashion, especially、um, or Kawaii fashion. Anything that's kind of loud and does stand out.、Um, it does take a lot of confidence to wear.、Um, but I think if that's How you see yourself and how you feel, then go for it.、Mm. You know? Yes, go for it. Yeah.、Uh, I'll, I'll cheer you on. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. Be brave. <laughs> and、yeah. remember, you didn't even put a letter in her post box and she went、um, back to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think so. Not anymore. <laughs> It's so much work. <laughs> What is like、um, one thing that where you think, okay, I have overcome this and it will always motivate me to keep going? Oh, that's a good question. Do you have one of those? Yeah, do you have? Well, probably my student years when I was working five jobs to just make sure that I could pay the rent. Yeah. And Candy's been through some、oh、challenges、gosh. in her life.、Yeah. We've heard about those. I was just saying, before we started, I was like, I remember you were working hard the last time we met. Kathy Cat's、mm-hmm. no slouch. You can go watch the Kathy <laughs>、yeah. Cat special episode of the podcast. You want to hear all about the Kathy Cat <laughs>、yeah, experience. This woman、busy. has worked hard. Yeah, she works very hard. <laughs> Thank、so、you. Breathtaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah,、That's、it's、it. like you know. You, I think、um, what I noticed while we're doing this podcast,、mm. everyone seems so sparkly. Every of our guests seems so sparkly, and it、mm. seems like magically they just got to where they are.、Mm. It's not exactly. Each、yeah. one of us has had some tough times, some hard decisions, some sacrifice, some literally breaking down moments in our lives. But the reason why we are here, where we are, is because we kept going.、Mm. True. I don't know if. I'm a dumb dumb though. Go on, come on. No, you're、now. not. No, you're not. You're a teacher. You're a psychologist. You study psychology. I was going to say, you're、yeah. way smarter than me. You're a consultant. <laughs> I'm just like, just taking it one day at a time、okay. at the moment. Yeah. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, my dear friend.、Yeah. Ring, ring. Tell the people where they can find you on the internet.、Uh, ring, ring doll for all the things、uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, now Twitch. And sometimes it has an underscore in between. So, <laughs> between Rin Rin and Doll, <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> you'll find out.、Just、yeah, you'll, you'll it. find it. <laughs> well, this has been an absolute pleasure. Anything else you want to tell the cat with beard viewers before we wrap this bad boy up? So, sh- she's my wife.、Ah. And <laughs> Lady Beard's my fiance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aren't they so cute? Yeah. <laughs> Please leave、Happy、all your、days. comments down below for them, and they will answer it. <laughs> This、Kawaii. is their post box <laughs> underneath、Kawaii. this video. <laughs> oh, that was super cute. That was so cute. <laughs> Wonderful way to round it up.、Oh. We ended it like we started it.、Yeah. Thank you so much、It's、for coming in. Thank you. Wonderful to have you, you sweetie. You. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you for coming thank in too. Yeah, we're all sicky sick sick. And yeah, thank you、oh、for、gosh. joining us on another installment of the podcast.、Mm. Oh, we look forward to saying hi again to all of you. Because、uh, Kathy so thought I was going to wrap it up, but I can see now that it's causing a problem. It's going to see how is, long I can keep it going for.、Mm-hmm. Wait for, for another episode of Chat with Fear. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>